the last half an hour here at Smurf and we're here with Adam. And I couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk about what is probably one of the highlights of the show, uh, this inaugural Smurf, and that is the, uh, the Vorum Phoenix. Phoenix, yes. Phoenix. This is quite a beast. It is, it, it really is. It's 600 by 600 by 600 in build area, all enclosed, polycarbonate panels, NEMA 23 drive system everywhere, 48 volts using custom controller board from Big Tree Tech, uh, and built in the United States and shipped here to England. Oh, wow. For the event. Wow. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot going on here. So yes. I see two stealth burners there. Yes, IDEX. Um, uh, a heated chamber. Uh, it is not actively heated, but there are 220 millimeter blower fans under the bed, pulling air from under the bed and pushing it through two active carbon filters at oh, the wow. back okay. for convection heating purposes to make sure we have a chamber nice and heated, wow. but not overly so. Full ball screw on every corner. Those are 12 millimeter ball screws. Okay. Uh, MGN 12s for all linear motion. One other thing I'm seeing is that not a lot of 3D printed parts. No, no, given the size and yeah. just mass of this machine, we did have to go with machine parts. And all the machine parts on this machine were done by Mandala Roseworks in the United States. Okay. Including this center grill right here, which is a solid Absolutely. billet piece of aluminum polished by hand to a mirror pop sheen and then laser engraved with both the Voron logo and this is the fact that it's Voron Phoenix serial number one. Number one. All right, this is it actually looks like it came off a car or something. Yes. So the 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 heat bed, let's talk about I saw that it's four independent yes, heat beds. Yes, it's four 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter heat beds, each with an independent heater. Okay. The reason for that is twofold. One, getting a single 600 millimeter square slab of aluminum to stay flat over time as you're oh, yeah. thermally cycling it, it's gonna be really difficult. So yeah. this lets us have more modularity with those. Okay. And also in the United States where I built this, we're typically on a 15 amp circuit at 110 yeah. volts. Yeah. So we have to be more careful about staggering heat ups and the like, and we couldn't do that with a single unified heater. Of course. Of so instead course. we've got four heaters under each one, of, or a heater under each one of the beds to allow us to bring one bed up to temperature, then the next bed and do it sequentially right, so that okay. we don't run a risk of popping breakers. All right. And, and I guess there is a way you could potentially do this in Slicer where it only heats up the quarter where maybe there, Th there is? There should be a way to do that in Slicer. Yeah. However, that's one of those more advanced features that is going to need both Slicer and Clipper cooperation okay. because this is running Clipper just like every right, other yeah, Boron. Of uh, but hypothetically, that should be possible. So like say I've, I'm printing four cubes, like you see one right here and I'm doing yeah. one here but I'm doing, or I'm doing four, but four I'm only doing only one on one corner. bed. I only have to heat that just one bed Yeah, up. it would be much more efficient in terms of yes. heating. It will be quicker, it, it, of course. Yes, it's yeah. kind of like what Prusa does with their AFS yeah, and yeah, also exactly. the Prusa XL, XL where they've got the chiplet beds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do believe, I'm not sure, but I saw someone just pick up one of yes. the tool heads. So the tool heads are using the Voron Tap nozzle probe system All right, okay. where there's an optical beam sensor that's interrupted as the tool head, or when the nozzle hits the bed, the tool head lifts up okay. and that triggers that and All that's right, okay. what actually is responsible for nozzle probing, right. directly nozzle probing the bed. So kind of the universal gospel right there, as opposed to having to know what your offset is from everything else. All right, okay. The nozzle hits the bed and that triggers it. The difference between this version of Voron Tap and the Voron Tap that's currently released is cur the current version of Voron Tap uses a single MGN9 50, me 50 millimeter long rail. Real. This is using a pair of VR2 precision slides, okay. which because it's paired up, you lose any ability to cant and All rock right, okay. under accelerations. All right. The downside to this is one, because they're precision, they need to be on a machined part, which these are, yeah. uh, but also there is the potential for them to cant ever so slightly if you're not very careful in their adjustment. Okay. And if they can't, they're going to bind either at the top or the bottom, so potentially All giving right. you not as good of results. So it does take more time to balance and adjust everything just right. But if you invest that time, you will get better results yeah, with that. Of course. Now, what about the powerhouse of all of this? Because so this, the, re the, the, the rear is as beautiful as it is on the front. So <laughs> the rear is, we put all the electronics on the back as opposed to underneath it. And the reason yeah. for that is this is very close to 300 pounds worth of printer. And of I don't course. know, I'm a size medium human being on a good day. So trying to lift this thing up and tip it over to get to the electronics is not going to happen. We put them on the back for that reason. Uh, all the all the thermally sensitive electronics, so the SSRs and, SSRs and the power supplies, are all on an aluminum 6061 aluminum plate 
and all of those are actually thermally compounded to that plate to okay. act as a heat sink for those. Oh, wow. To okay. act, and there's fans on the back, 120 mm, 20 millimeter Noctua fans actively cooling that plate and those components to make sure they don't overheat because you want your power supplies and whatnot to be absolutely bomb proof. And then it, this is being powered by the new Big Tree Tech Kraken controller board, yeah. Yeah. which was designed in, co in collaboration with us. We wanted, wow. okay. I, I reached out to Big Tree Tech and said, I needed the be all end all controller board <laughs> for 48 volts. Yeah. And they said, well, we've got the Octopus Pro Max. And I'm like, but I want to run five amp NEMA 23s. And they're like, Oh, uh, so they came back with the Kraken, and the Kraken is eight drivers oh, wow. on that board. Four of those drivers are on JST XH, so the normal JST connector okay. would be as used with uh, NEMA 17s yep. and the like. The real money, though, is on the XY motors, because this uses four motors for its IDEX system, oh, wow. a oh, pair of motors for Y, and then each tool head is on its own independent X, X motor. Yep. So what we do is those are on separate higher current capacitors. So each wow. one of those capacitors has about 880 microfarads of capacitance. Okay. And they're actually using JST VH connectors for I believe up to 10 amps of current wow. being drawn okay. through it. Wow. But once again, the goal was to be able to run five amp NEMA 23s. Now the ball screws and the linear, or the ball screws and the NEMA 23s in here were built for us by LDO Motors, okay. uh, along with the beds. Okay. The linear motion, the linear guides were built by Fabrico, a company out of the United yeah. States for us. Uh, the machining, all the machine parts were, as I said, by Mandala Rose Works. Controller board by Big Tree Tech. In terms of kits, it's anyone's guess who will be offering kits, because yeah. if you really think about it, if you do this as one unified machine, shipping that out, you're looking at several hundred yeah. dollars just yeah. to ship the parts. Right. I mean, you've got this giant, these giant sets of extrusions, which are yeah, very expensive course, to ship themselves. Course. These panels, the back panel alone is over a meter in its longest dimension. So yep. ideally in my mind, and I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth, this is just what Adam thinks, is it would probably be better to do sub-assembly kits. So like, here's all your rails, yes. here's your linear, yes. here's your ball screws, here's your extrusions, exactly. here's your panels, here's your electronics, and let people pick and choose and exactly buy as they need they to. Because they might, like for example, myself, I have a CO2 laser, yes. you know, in my warehouse. I can cut all these acrylic panels yes. myself, so I might not need those. Exactly. So yeah, I, I totally let you, get that. Let you op cost optimize things as you're able to, but yeah. at the same time, leverage the economies of scale of kit manufacturers, of course. buying of course. a thousand of a thing as opposed to you buying one of a thing. Of course, of course. Now that I think of it, I'm, I, I also have a CNC mill, so I can also do. You can make the parts yourself. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. exactly. So there's there's quite a lot that. I wouldn't necessarily need to spend on in terms of shipping exactly. and like that I can do myself. Yes. Which would definitely make it make me more involved and make it more personal. I, I'm guessing the, the BOM for this, the bomb, I, I, since this is a one-off at the moment, I'm guessing the price would have been relatively Yes, empty. it is. I, I honestly have not done the math exactly on how much Probably I spent on this because I don't want to. <laughs> that this was done also over several months and yeah, several I McMaster orders and whatnot. Uh, but you know the panels were roughly a thousand dollars. The screws alone for McMaster car and McMaster car in the United States is not the cheapest yeah. place to source screws, yeah. but they are high quality. Yeah. And a McMaster car warehouse is I order one day it arrives to me the next yeah. day. Yeah. But the screws alone were about another eight hundred dollars. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, and and it says a lot about a machine when you have about $800 worth of screws. That's yes, just, uh, yes, know. very much so. I mean, you know, it, there's a, going to be a smaller market yeah, for this machine course, than there course. are for others because this is a very large. Very unique machine. and very, very specific type of machine. And it's like very I, large. I don't mind not having a wardrobe at home to have yes. one of these, you know? Uh, <laughs> but it's one of those things like when I built this, I built it downstairs in my dining room, yeah. one of the joys of being single. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but the only door in my house this would fit out of was my front door, and it only fit out my front door after I took the doors and the backpack exactly. off. Exactly. So if I want to put this anywhere else in my house, it's going to uh, it's going to be built in place yeah, and exactly. never going out, never leaving until I disassemble yeah. it to move. I'm I'm 100 percent sure at some point this I'm going to have one of these. Yes, because you know I am. It me. is awesome. <laughs> it, it is, is awesome. awesome. And also, I could use the cabinet to put 3D printers on. So yes, <laughs> there you go. Well, I mean, it, worse comes to worse, you just double your order of extrusion exactly. parts and put a countertop exactly. on another part. Exactly. Now you have a bench. Exactly. I can clothes, coffee, and there you go. Yep. 3D printer. Yep. 
Brilliant. Thank you very much, Adam. It was an My pleasure. pleasure. And I hope to see you very soon and get some more news in this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Cheers.